What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial and today I'll talk about AWS EMR which is a very popular service in the big data and machine learning world and then I'm going to show you an example on how to do a spark summary job on the EMR cluster to process data from Stack Overflow We're going to use Python and PySpark for this demo but before we get to the demo I want to talk about what exactly EMR is first So EMR stands for Elastic Map Reduce which is a which is an AWS service that allows you to scale and run your big data server on demand on the cloud, which I think is very beneficial because typically big data servers require very high computing power and they're very expensive, so you don't want to run them all the time. But if you can just spin it up when you need it and then tear it down when you don't need them anymore, that saves you a lot of money over time. And then the other benefit that EMR has is that when you spin up your EMR cluster, you can you can choose whatever big data framework that you need to install and configure into your EMR cluster, such as Apache Spark, Hadoop, Hive, TensorFlow, etc. And the way EMR works is that it uses EC2 instances on the background as its worker nodes that does all the heavy lifting for data processing and stuff. And then it uses S3 buckets as its file system. This is how it looks like. So this whole thing here is considered one EMR cluster that it consists of a master node that acts like a brain of the cluster that it delegates all the tasks to the test nodes and tells them what to do and you can choose as many core nodes as you want in your system or in your cluster and each of them has all the softwares that you selected installed in the, in the system and the reason why it has to use an S3 bucket for the file system is that EMR works very differently from how, how things work in our local machine so in our local machine, we can just use our laptop as both our server and our file system we can read and write from the laptop itself. But in EMR, things are different because each node is an individual server and they process all the data in parallel. So you cannot just say that, okay, I'm going to save all the data in, our, in my local machine because that cannot be accessed by another core node. So the data has to be saved in a central location where all the machines can access. And AWS S3 is a perfect platform for that. So the whole flow works like this. So we do a Spark summary job on the, on the master nodes, and then it delegates all the tasks to the core nodes. And then all the core nodes can access the, the data source from the S3 bucket. And then while it's processing it, it saves the intermediate files to the S3 bucket as well. So that other core nodes that are processing the data in parallel can access them as well. And that's what makes the EMR cluster so powerful and fast. And one last thing I want to mention is that it's very easy to integrate EMR with other AWS services such as Kinesis that you can just publish the data to the, to the stream and DynamoDB if you want to save your data to the database after you finish processing it. Alright, so now we have learned about EMR. Let's spin up a cluster and then do a Spark summary job on it. Okay, so right now I'm on the homepage of the AWS console and step number one is to create an EMR cluster. So I'm going to type in EMR. and then create a cluster. Give it a name, I'll just call it EMR Demo Cluster. And for logging, this is gonna be the S3 bucket that EMR creates for you automatically to store the logs. And then for launch mode, we're gonna do cluster uh, because we're gonna do a manual Spark summary job on it. Um, the step execution is where you define the steps beforehand and then when the EMR cluster finish all the steps, it's gonna terminate itself. We don't want that to happen release we're going to choose version 5 and then in here since we're going to use spark so we're going to select this combination that it has spark hadoop yarn that's all we need and then for the instance type uh, we're just going to keep it as m5 extra large and the number of instances so this is where you choose how many core nodes you want and for us we're going to do a very simple spark summary job i think two core nodes is enough and then for the key pair, I already have a key pair created for this account, so I'm going to choose that one. This is very important because you need to have a key pair in order to SSH into your EMR clusters. So if you don't have one, you should stop here and then create one first. I'll include a link down below where you can find instructions on how to create a key pair. And then permission, we're just going to give everything as default. And that allows the EMR cluster to access our S3 bucket. And then I'm going to hit create cluster and it's starting. 
I think this is gonna take about 10 minutes. So meanwhile, we're gonna download the Stack Overflow data while we are waiting for it to provision. So this is the website that we're gonna get our survey data from Stack Overflow. And when we scroll down, we're gonna get the results from all the years. We're just gonna choose this one. Um, so what you can do is you can just click download full data. And then you just click download button here to download everything. I already have this download in my machine, so I'm not gonna do it again. But all you need to do is hit download and it's gonna download a zip file for you. And after you download the data, this is how it looks like in a zip folder. You're gonna have four files and this is all you need for the uh, data, the detailed data. And I already have that opened up in my Google Sheet and this is how it looks like. Just random things uh, from a survey from other people. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a S3 bucket and then upload this file to S3 bucket so that the EMR cost can access them for data processing. So I'm gonna go back to the AWS console. I'll type in S3, open that into a new tab. Yeah, so this is the bucket that EMR created for you for storing the logs. And now we're gonna create a different one to store our data source. I'll just call it GenMeister bucket one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll keep it on the US East region. I'll enable versioning, enable server side encryption, and then hit create. All right, so it's done. I'm going to click on it. And then we're going to create a new folder. I'll just call it data source. Enable server side encryption. Hit create folder. And then we'll click on it. And then upload. Add files. That's what we need. But one thing to make sure is that S3 doesn't like spaces in the names. Uh, so you have to change the spaces to underscore or dash. I hit upload. Okay, so it's done. And now we can move on to the next step, which is to write a code for the Spark Summit job to process the data. So I'm going to open VS Code and open an empty photo code tutorial. And then I'm going to create a file called main. Py. First thing first, we're gonna do some imports. PySpark. That's SQL. Import. We're gonna import Spark session, and then the next thing we're gonna use is column, and then we're gonna define two variables for the data source path and where we want to save our data after we process it. And now I'm going to go back to the S3 bucket and then just copy S3 URL and paste it here. And then copy this file name. And then do the same thing for the output file path. We're going to save in the same S3 bucket except in a different folder. We're going to call it data output. Okay. And now we're gonna do, and then we're gonna call the main method. And now we're gonna define the main method. First, we're gonna define Spark. We just call the name, I'll just call it JMeister demo app. But you can call it whatever you want. Then do get or create. And then next, we're first going to read the data from this path, from our S3 bucket. So just go do all data. We do CSV here because the data type that we have is a CSV file. And then make sure that you have the header enabled. What this does is that it's going to take the first row in our data file as our header. And then we're going to just print out something like 
So we want to see like how many records we have in the data source file. And then we're going to select the data based on condition. So I'm going to do selected data equal to all data where column. Let's see what columns we have. Let's do country. We're going to select all the columns that are, I mean rows that are, let's say, United States. And let's see what else we have that is interesting. Let's do work with hours. We're going to select all the rows that are based on United States and has work week hours that are greater than 45 hours. So we can see how many workaholics are there in the United States. One thing I want to mention here that's very important is that make sure that you add the parentheses around these two conditions, otherwise it's not going to work. So that should be good. And now we're going to print out how many records we have in the selected data. Same thing, we just do a count on it. And then finally, we're going to save the data to our S3 bucket. So I'm going to do right. So what that means is that if we already have some data in this folder, it's going to overwrite it. And then we're going to save it as pocket file. You can save it as a CSV if you want, but I think pocket file is a more popular format in the big data world. So I'm going to save it as a pocket file. And then finally, we're going to print out something like Okay, so I think that's everything. Basically what it does is that it reads in the data file that we just uploaded to S3. And then it does a selection on all the rows, all the records in the data frame that it only select the country that's in the United States and work hours that's greater than 45 hours a week. But you can do whatever you want with the data. But this is just one example that I wanna show you. And then finally, we're gonna save the selected data to our S3 bucket output path. All right, and now let's go back to the EMR console and see if it's, it's done spinning up. Okay, so you can see that it's waiting and the nodes are running. So one thing we need to do before we can SSH into our EMR cluster is that we have to open port 22 in the security groups. So I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna click on this. And then we're gonna choose the master node security group, which is that, so I'm gonna click on it. And then I'm going to hit Edit Inbound Rules. Scroll all the way down, Edit Row. We're going to choose SSH, port 22. And then I'm going to choose My IP. And then hit Save Rules. All right, so it's done. And now let's go back to the EMR cluster. And when I click here, it's going to give me instruction on how to connect to it or SSH into it. I have a Mac, so I'm going to follow this. But if you have a Windows, you're going to follow this instruction. So I'm going to open the terminal. And then I'll do ssh-i. And then the location of my key pair. And I saved it in here. Um, so you have to specify the location where you saved yours. And then I'm going to copy this. Hit enter. Hit yes. Now I'm in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file called main.py. And then I'm going to press I, the key I, for insert. And then go back to the code that we just wrote. I'm going to copy everything. And then paste it here. It looks good. I'm going to hit the escape key. Hit the colon. WQ. Hit enter. And how we're gonna do the Spark submit is that I'm gonna type in Spark dash submit and then the main file that we just created and then hit enter. 
All right, it's going. Okay, so it seems like it's done and it's successful. It's kind of hard to see the logs. So let me just do a search on this. So the total number of records in our data source is 64,000. And the total number after we filter it is 1,500. So about 1,500 of the people worked more than 45 hours in, um, in a week. And obviously that's based on the survey. And I guess that is also successful, I guess. Yep, and it's saved to this location. And now let, when we go back to the S3 bucket, go back to here, there should be a new folder that's created for our data output. And when we click on it, we should see some pocket files here. One more thing is that you can just go back to your EMR cluster, click on applications, user interface, and then hit refresh here. You should be able to see the job that's successful that we just ran, and you can see the durations and stuff. And when you click on it, you should be able to see all the tasks for all the stages in here. And one thing you have to do before you go is that you have to terminate your EMR cluster, otherwise it's going to charge you money. So all you need to do is hit terminate here, and then hit terminate. And now it's being terminated. And this is it everyone, I hope you have learned something, and if you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.